Hello, my name is Stanford Gibson. I'm the sediment transport specialist at HEC, and this is part two of the Riprap and Scour Calculator introductory video. The Riprap and Scour Calculator is a new tool in HEC RAS version 6.1. It was funded by the Regional Sediment Management Program, and the interfaces you'll see today were coded by Zach Morris. So in part one of the video, we showed you the Riprap calculator and how to size Riprap um, with RAS results. But it isn't just called the Riprap Calculator. It's called the Riprap and Scour Calculator. We've embedded these two tools together because of a pretty important reason, because it, which is fundamental to the Corps of Engineers analysis. You see, when you place Riprap, you don't actually just get to size the stone. When you size the stone, you aren't actually done because the primary failure mode for Riprap is not like individual classed removal, but it's actually toe scour. The river can scour the toe, particularly on the outside of the bank, which is generally what we're protecting. And if the river scours the toe, then your riprap can slough into the toe scour hole, leave the bank unprotected, and then the bank will, continue, will fail, and your riprap will actually do, be of little value. So there are two strategies for what we call toe protection, for avoiding this kind of toe scour failure. The first is keying the toe. And the idea here is that you're just going to go in and you're going to kind of pre-excavate what you expect the scour to be, and then you're just going to riprap all the way down into that keyed toe so that when the river does scour, it only scours down to the level of protection. It doesn't get beneath the level of protection or undermine your protection. The second kind of easier and more common and kind of smaller systems approach is what we call the launchable toe. In this case, you just kind of overload the toe so that when the river does scour, the riprap launches into, that's where the term comes from, it launches into that scour hole and continues to protect. It's a kind of self-healing method so that as the river excavates the toe, you have sacrificial rock there to go and fill that hole and so the toe doesn't get undermined. And so both of these methods, both the keyed toe and the launchable toe, they both require a calculation. They require you to calculate the actual depth of scour. And a lot of times this is the depth of the scour on the outside of a bank, but you know, sometimes if you're kind of looking to protect, say, a pipeline, you're interested in just you know, how much is the channel going to scour in general. And so those are very empirical equations. You know, coming up with a bend scour, that's actually a very complicated three-dimensional problem. So whenever there's a complicated three-dimensional problem, you've got a couple options. You can run a complicated three-dimensional or physical model and then still have a lot of uncertainty. Or you can run kind of a suite of simplified empirical models. And that's what this riprap calculator offers. Um, we paired the riprap calculator with a scour calculator that runs a suite of kind of older, simpler empirical equations. They're pretty simple equations. Most of them are collected in a document written by Pemberton and Laura. We have links to that in our user's documentation. And so the tool will actually apply not one scour method, but a suite of scour methods, some of which may be appropriate, some not. And then you can look at what are the scours that are computed by the different methods, which methods are appropriate, and then look at some sort of ensemble representation of what the scour could be, and then use engineering judgment and kind of local expertise to determine what you think the scour depth is going to be and protect either by keying the toe or adding a launchable toe. So this is the RIPRAP editor. If you're interested in how to use this, you can go back to the first video in this series. But the idea here is that we've computed a D30 for our stable riprap, and then went in and found gradations and thicknesses for that. Okay, so we have, we've sized our rock with the riprap calculator. It was a pretty straightforward calculation. Scour depth is less straightforward. And so what you'll see is we just have two tabs up here, riprap and scour depth. So now we're gonna click on the scour depth tab. And RAS will import all of the hydraulic information that you need, both from the upstream reference cross-section and from the design cross-section. Now for riprap, we only needed the upstream reference cross-section because the Maynard equation only uses that upstream reference cross-section. But different scour equations use different equations. Most of the bend scour equations, they use the hydraulic data from the upstream reference cross-section for the same reason that the Maynard equation does, is because you're computing scour on the outside of the bend. That's a very multi-dimensional process. And so in order to kind of apply a, a pretty simple 1D empirical equation, you're actually going to look at the upstream reference cross-section where hydraulics are pretty well behaved. If you're looking at scour in like a general like across the channel itself well then you're actually going to use the design cross-section you're going to use the cross-section 
that you're computing Scour at. And so you'll notice that we bring in hydraulic data both at the local cross-section and at the upstream reference cross-section. We actually bring in a lot more hydraulic data from RAS than we do for the riprap calculator because we're not just solving one equation that has a couple variables, we're actually solving a suite of equations. And so the different equations require different variables. And so you really only need to put in two values to get most of the results here. Again, you need a radius of curvature. Well, we already had that for the riprap calculator, so we're going to put in our radius of curvature. And then you need a D50. And so let's just say that the D50 is one millimeter. Um, then you're also going to choose a bend severity. Now, we recommend one for you based on the radius of curvature. The ratio of the radius of curvature to the width actually puts you in one of three different categories, moderate, severe, or straight. And there are criteria for that. And so we tell you right underneath what we recommend. And then you can decide to use it or go your own way. And so then there are a few other blanks here. You'll notice that almost all of our equations solve. These are the results. You have the Ben Scow results and the general Scow results. Um, Neil does not, and that's because Neil requires bankful information. Now, in future versions, we're going to let you choose a separate profile that would be a bankful profile. But for now, let's just go in and put in some uh, manual bankful information that kind of scales to the, the data that we have there. And you can go in and look at this exponent and what that all means in the user's manual. But what you'll see now is that now we have all the information we need and we've computed you know, four types of Ben Scour and four types of General Scour. So let's look at the General Scour first. The General Scour plots as essentially just a raised or lowered cross section. If it's raised, well then you compute a negative scour and it's not appropriate for the application. But you'll notice that we've computed you know, a pretty good range here. We have two threes and two sevens. That's actually not a lot of spread. You're pretty constrained. If these equations are all appropriate, well, then it's in a range from three to seven. But one question you want to ask is, are these appropriate? Now, you can go to the user's manual and look at you know, what are the appropriate parameters for these different equations. You know, what were the conditions under which they were developed? If you end up doing this kind of work, you should know that stuff. You should go and learn you know, when are the different equations appropriate. But we also give you these little buttons, these, these little caution buttons. If you get a caution button, it means that you know, something's gone wrong or you have the, you've used the equation outside of the recommended parameters. So for example, Lacey here, you have this caution button and it says, hey, you know what? Lacey was developed for silt bed rivers. You know, that is a D50 of less than 0.0625. Is our D50 less than 0.0625? No, it's not. So maybe we don't want to use Lacey. And so you can just turn that off and now your ensemble looks different. All right, and so that's the general scour. The general scour just kind of lowers the bed. But what we're often interested in with riprap is the bend scour. So in that case, we're just going to turn all these off because we're not interested in them. And what we're really interested is in is the bend scour. But you'll notice that the bend scour, it, it plots in an unrealistic place. You know, it's all the way to the left bank. Well, that's because we don't actually know what the toe of your bank is. That's not something that we can kind of sense automatically. And so you need to tell us if you want it to visualize in the right place, hey, where's the toe of your bank? So I'm going to go in here. And I'm going to see that, hey, my bank is somewhere around 165. And so I'm going to go type in the tow station, 165. And then if I zoom in, my tow scour is going to essentially plot below whatever the closest node is to the line that I selected. And that's just going to connect the left and right nodes of it and you know, fit a spline to that. So you can kind of visualize the different tow scours. And you can see that you know, one of these is plotting a lot lower than the other. That's going to be the Zeller bend equation. But most of these are in the you know, six and a half to 10 range. And so that's kind of the range in which you would be looking for an answer. Do you average these? No, I mean, we will report these to uh, three sig figs, but they're, are they reliable to three sig figs? No, they're not reliable to one sig fig. And so what the reason we provide you multiple different equations is so you can kind of look at what is the uncertainty and the spread and evaluate them from kind of an ensemble approach and then make a kind of a qualitative assessment based on you know, the history of the system and your knowledge of these equations for what you think a appropriate scour depth 
that you want to protect to is also based on you know, the, the risk associated with the project and also the consequence of failure. And so, for example, um, if we look at this, we might say, you know, Zeller does look like a low outlier. Um, I'm not sure that I trust that when the other three are grouping pretty well. But what about Maynard? You know, we get this, this error button for Maynard. And so what, what's the problem with Maynard? Well, it says, hey, Maynard was developed for slopes less than 0 0.002. Well, what's our slope? 0 0.0021. Well, am I going to kick Maynard out? I don't think so. You know, Maynard is essentially providing evidence that that six and a half to 10 range is appropriate. And, you know, the energy slope that we're looking at is 0 0.0021. We're actually kind of close to the limit. And so I think that that's kind of part of the ensemble evidence that you would use to estimate a toe scour at this location. And so then you'll use the, the riprap calculator to provide your size and then the toe scour to determine, you know, what is the keying depth or the depth, the extra rock that you would have to add in order to have a launchable toe that would fill the scour gap. And so those two editors work together. That's why we added them together. And this is the process that we use in the core. We, you know, HEC was guided through this process by our partners at the Coastal and Hydraulics Lab, David May, Chris Herring, and David Biedenharn. And again, this work was funded by the Regional Sediment Management Program, and the interface was coded by the excellent software developer, Zach Morris.